Ogunyemi will jump it up with Rob. Those are the top two shot blockers in the league. And it's Niagara winning the tip. This is Khalil Dukes, the USC transfer. You heard Coach Patsos reference him in the pregame. 16 points a game, ninth in the MAC, four and a half assists, sixth in the conference. Well, he's tough because he's so good at the dribble drive going by guys. Rob couldn't get it to go. Rebound dug out by Bisping. Rob, for a six foot eight player, only shoots 46%, so struggles to finish around the basket. Despite his good size, Long to the hoop, and he scores. Well, there's the small forward matchup. Levon Long against Matt Scott. Scott at six foot four, very athletic, very long. But Levon at six foot seven, definitely with the height advantage. Saints do a great job. First possession going inside to their mismatch. In most of the max statistics, has Scott a wild shot. Rebound is loose. It's picked up by Prochet. He's fouled. Uh, Brett Bisping with the rebound, but then lost it. Niagara led by head coach Chris Casey in his fourth season, 31 and 92, trying to build up this Niagara program. He's one and seven since he got to Niagara against Siena. Really had a lot of roster turnover the last few years. But trying to build with this young team he has this year, as we said, really a no seniors play, huge roles on this team. The top six or seven guys are all non-seniors. Turnover, long, comes away with it. Nice bounce pass, Bisping lays it in. Boy, you love the start for Levon Long, the focus. He is dialed in. He gets some buckets at the offensive end, drops an assist, finding Brett Bisping, gets a steal. This team is very good when Levon has the focus that they need him to have. Barton's miss, rebounded by Shivers. Chris Casey's coat comes off 80 seconds into the game. And Chris Casey is a well-traveled coach. Coach at Division Three, Division Two, Division I levels, assistant coach. Saints on fire to start the game, early touchdown. Similar to the Manhattan game, the Saints start off blanking the opposition for seven points for the Saints. Six nothing to open that Manhattan game. The way you want to start, particularly against a team that's a bit down on its luck. First four minutes of the game, first four minutes of the second half are huge for momentum. And the Saints seem to have grabbed it in the early going. Marvin Prochet gets Niagara on the board. Sophomore from Brooklyn, nine and a half points a game. Saints continue to try to go inside. They've gone to Ogunyemi, they've gone to Long. This time it's a long three, but before that a Marquise right charge. Oh, good job setting up in the help position. Matt Scott, he was guarding Levon Long. That's why Levon was so wide open in the corner, but he took away the dribble drive. He's the help defender, draws that charge. Textbook help defense right there by Scott. Full court press here for Siena. Broken very easily. Two on one break. Dukes to the rim. Lays it up and in. And that's too easy. You need your rim protector to be a little bit more defensive near the basket. Javion giving the lane and not getting the block shot as Niagara scores in transition. Right to three. Way off the mark. Rebounded by Chris Barton. Crochet takes it to the rim, draws contact, followed up and in. Well, that was pretty good defense, but you got five Siena players standing flat-footed as Niagara grabs an offensive rebound. Matt Scott, the board and the score, as long as foul. Foul on Law on Scott, his first. Jimmy Patsoth closed, clothed by Mark Thomas Men's Apparel, trying to draw his record even in his fourth season at Siena, 65 and 66. 13th season overall, 210 and 201. Right, attacks the rim, and is fouled. It's amazing, he drew that foul because of the double clutch. He should have had his shot blocked, but instead brings the ball down, double clutches, and draws the foul. Dominic Robb, who is a little foul prone, does lead the Mac by a wide margin in blocks. As 70 blocks, Ogunyemi is second with 54 as Wright gets on the board. 
Marquise, the reigning MAC Player of the Week. And started this week with 36 points against Monmouth. Unfortunately, that was overshadowed by the person who's certain to be MAC Player of the Week tomorrow on Monday. Justin Robinson, who scored 40, and then followed that up with, I believe, 27 in their last game. Well, let's just go out on a limb and say player of the week and season, most likely. And they're going to get Rob on a foul as he was posting up Marquise Wright. He had the mismatch, but he pushes off. That's a costly second foul for Niagara. Not necessarily a deep team. Very not deep in the front court. Yeah, in the front court. I mean, they play a lot of guys, a lot of guys average in double figures, but Rob is one of the true rim protectors for them. And, and Coach Patzel's talked about it before the game. They like to extend themselves. They like the full court trap. Well, they got guards that can do that, but they need the rim protector, and that's what Dominic Rob has been for the Purple Eagles. The only senior on the team, Maurice Taylor Jr., checks in, and he immediately steals it. That was a poor entry pass right there by Marquise Wright. Dukes. Tough fade away. Tough. Niagara ties it. it. Reminds you a lot of Sam Cassell. Just kind of lulls you to sleep. Doesn't play athletic, but he's effective. Taylor got a piece of that one. Taylor punches it out for Dukes. Four on one. Scott attacks the rim, and he had it blocked out of bounds, saving what should have been a layup. Saints got off to the quick start. Niagara has rallied to tie it at eight. Tied at eight early. Tom, sometimes I like to throw you off a little bit. Oh, that's easy. I would contend, you talked about Justin Robinson. He's certain to win the player of the year. He's going to be the second year in a row. If he were not in the league, I'm going to say that Matt Scott would have a very good chance to win Mac player of the year. Now, follow me here, okay? It would stand to reason that the Mac player of the year would probably be among the top ten scorers in the league. Justin Robinson is number one. He's going to win. This is all hypothetical. Tyler Nelson, number two, Fairfield. Doesn't do a lot besides score. Matt Scott, number three, also sixth in rebounding. Khalid Hart, last place. Two guys from Canisius, Robertson and Crumpton. Kind of split the vote there. Washington from Iona, I think would be probably first team all Mac. Mikey Dixon, Quinnipiac, freshman. Khalil Dukes, Niagara, and Marquise Wright of Siena, who I also think would be first team All-Mac if the season ended today. Scott, from a statistical standpoint, is right up there with the top players in the league. The only problem, of course, is team's not very good. And, and I think that's a big part of it, how you led your team. You know, Chris Casey could be doing a great job at Niagara, but if they finish in the lower third of the mm -hmm. conference, it's hard to give him coach of the year. So it's... I think it's the same for player of the year. If he was averaging, you know, mid twenties and he was by far and away ahead of everyone, yeah. then I would agree with your argument. And I think it's a great point. I think it's a great compliment to Matt Scott. Um, but the Saints will try to answer. Shiver is the three. Nice inside outside action right there. Again, the time of year where you start looking at all MAC teams. Dukes, quick fire, very quick shot. It's rebounded by Barton. It's obviously Robinson. It's not the year of. Well, you know what? It's the year of Monmouth. We could say there's yeah. not a dominant. Monmouth is the dominant team. Coach Patso said after the last game that he thinks Monmouth is worthy of an at-large bid if they don't win the MAC championship. Overlooked is that Monmouth has the same record they did last year when they had so much hype. They didn't do the same things in non-conference this year, but they have the same overall and conference record. Ogunyemi inside. Volleyed around and a foul against Niagara. On the offensive rebound attempt by Shivers. It's called on Scott. It's his second. So he goes to the bench with two fouls. Wholesale subs, Nico Clareth, who comes off a big game, is in, along with Kadeem Smithen and Evan Fisher. Should we just refer to Matt Scott now as Robert Lee's pick for player of the year in the MAC? If Justin Robinson was not in the league. So okay. it's a huge if. Justin Robinson's going to win, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. I think Matt Scott should be on the first team. He's probably a big reason why they've had the success they've had. I mean, they're 9-19. and 19. They've struggled. They do have a couple of nice wins. I mean, they beat uh, Iona. They beat St. Peter's. Canisius twice. They beat Canisius twice. So they've got some nice wins. Turnover. Oh, 
The Saints are turning the ball over too frequently. That's at least their fifth turnover of the game. But I starred four players out of those top ten. Robinson Scott, Jordan Washington of Iona, and Marquise Wright with a question mark. I think Washington and Wright are strong contenders. I don't think they're as maybe as likely, and certainly not as a Robinson. Larkin, the long two. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think Scott and Dukes will be on all MAC teams considering where they finish in the standings? Could you argue that teams that finish above them deserve to have those players on True. all MAC teams? True. And those, both those guys put I think they will both be on all MAC teams. I'm not sure which ones. I think they will both do uh, as Niagara has taken its first lead of the game. What do you do with Khalid Hart? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Marist. Maris is struggling, but they'd be much worse if they didn't have Khalid Hart. Fisher rebounds the miss by Prochet. That will all be decided in the next couple of weeks. The All Mac teams certainly you've got to think Sienna's got a lot of contenders. Stolen away. Taylor's been huge since coming into the game. Give and go to the rim. Barton is fouled. This happened three games ago. Dominic Robb, when they played at Canisius, Dominic Robb picked up two fouls right away in the first three minutes. Taylor came in and put up about, put up about seven and five before halftime and then barely played after halftime, but really you know, kind of held the line while Robb was out of the game. Put up good numbers for a guy coming off the bench. You know, Taylor's a kid that averages 2.8 points a game, so for him to do that when Robb had foul trouble, to your point, was exceptional. Friday into the game, Sammy Friday along with Bisping and Wright. Well, the turnovers really have taken the wind out of the Siena, out of Siena's sails. They start off the game on a 7-0 run, and now they've got six turnovers. That has just really plagued them, and now Niagara has the lead, but also has hope. Saints started, as you said, scoring the first seven points of the game. Martin, his first point of the game. Long, who got off to a hot start. I think it was an unintentional pass to Friday, and he's fouled. It's called on Taylor. Send us to a break. Niagara with the early three-point lead after getting off to a slow start. Niagara with the early lead. This game was a special 8 o'clock start time with more on why. Let's go down to Marissa. Hey, Robert. Yeah, definitely a reason for the 8 o'clock start. The Albany Devils actually played a home game here at the Times Union Center earlier today at 1 o'clock. So the crew had to come in and had to go from ice to court very quickly. I was talking with Bob Belber, and he said it was the fastest changeover that they have ever had. Just took them two hours to go from full ice to the basketball court. Robert? That kind of teamwork is amazing. Move very fast. Not, yeah, there's not a lot of time. I mean, you can't mess up, because all of a sudden the game gets delayed, and just great work by the Times Union Center crew here. And Pete Rajat shot that video in real time. <laughs> Friday missed the first free throw. Freshman from Jersey City. One out of two for Friday. Full court press here for Siena. And again, th this worked against the Jaspers. Siena created a lot of turnovers with this press against Manhattan, the team that likes to press themselves. Dukes open three, buries it. Couple of easy baskets for Dukes off the full court press. He's got seven. Very unorthodox but effective shot. Right. Well long. Both his threes so far have been way off the mark. Wright's been playing so well of late. Larkin, a quick fire shooter. And when Niagara gets hot, they can really turn it on. 39% from beyond the arc, second in the league. Wright scores to the rim and scores. Finding a seam in transition. Marquise Wright doing a great job when you're not knocking down jump shots. Take the ball to the basket. Good recognition by the senior. Prochet, nice leave underneath for a score by Taylor. Niagara Taylor. scoring at will right now. Taylor, to your point, against Canisius. Now he's doing it against the Saints, putting up good numbers with Rob out of the game. Clareth, quick fire three. 
Great play by Long to save it out of bounds off of Niagara. Oh, I like the way they let the athletes play as well. Two players going up. Levon just got up higher and was able to retain possession for the Saints. In that game you mentioned against Canisius, which was Niagara's only win in the last five. Bisping quick three. Saints off from beyond the arc. Now Long the foul. That was a close game, and Niagara really showed some of their ability in the second half. They shot 78% after halftime and made eight out of nine three-pointers. And ended up blowing out Canisius at Canisius that night a couple of weeks, actually last Friday. It's amazing when teams get hot from outside the arc. It seems to help their uh, success. Yes, Dukes. Quick shot there, shivers the rebound. Not a lot of patience here. But it's been effective for Niagara. Right drives to the rim and scores. Tough shot going right at Dukes, going right by Prochet. Marquise so gifted with the basketball, able to get by players. So explosive, so athletic. Martin against the bigger Oganyemi. Out of bounds. Into the game, James Towns, along with Dominic Robb, with two fouls for Niagara. James Towns, a freshman from Detroit, three and a half points, 13 minutes a game. So they bring Robb back in, and Robb is really in the middle of a lot of the action in the paint. He has two fouls. Bad, bad turnover by Siena. Wright goes down. Crowd holding its collective breath. Wright appears to be okay. Been very dangerous. He was just beyond the seats. It's kind of like a ridge with a platform mm -hmm. that you could hit and really do some uh, damage to your body. Marquise luckily is okay. Seven turnovers for Siena, not even halfway through the first half. Six out of 13 from the field, but Niagara's taking 20 shots. Just getting more opportunities are the Purple Eagles. Thus have a three-point lead. Steal by Long, very active so far. Shivers attacks the rim and scores. Nice athletic play by Asante Shivers. Nice steal by Levon Long. Rob dunks it at the other end. Niagara quickly answers. Niagara looking to push the tempo as much as any team in the conference. Teams score a similar amount of points per game. Siena 74, Niagara 76. There is the athletic finish. Assist by Ogunyemi. Nice cut by Clareth along the baseline. Overplayed at the three-point line. This is also what Coach Patso said. They have to continue to score with the Purple Eagles. This is a, a Niagara team that can really put points on the board. Boy, Long has just been everywhere. He's a menace. Taylor, mid-range jumper. Four points from Maurice Taylor, as Tom said, averages three points a game. Clareth comes off a big game, 20 points, five out of eight from downtown against Manhattan. Foul against Niagara. Dukes, he's been caught up with a few different players. I've seen him flail and knock some guys off their position. Second time that happened, this time he ran into Ogunyem. He tried to go through him. Bisping, who got off to a good start in for Clareth. Sometimes players do that because they're trying to draw attention to possibly a legal screen. So we'll see what plays out after that foul by Dukes. Sixth foul against Niagara. Saints will shoot free throws the rest of the half. Ogunyemi has not scored. Just hacked on the arm and banked it in. Lost the basketball going up. He did not mean to shoot it that way, but it went in. Good to be lucky sometimes. Towns trying to answer quickly. Bisping the rebound. Saints chance to take the lead here. Wright running up on Dukes to a cutting Bisping. Rebounded by Rob. Just short with the jump hook. Both teams going end to end. Keep in mind, Niagara playing without Matt Scott, who's on the bench with two fouls. Rob, ugly jumper, rebounded by Wright. Nobody stopped the ball. Wright all the way to the rim. Scored and a foul. Strength right there. Taylor with the lazy play. Taylor might be a little bit tired in his defense. Was very flat-footed and tried to stop Marquise Wright, but got him across the arm. Wright with seven points now. Long out of the game, Nico Clareth back in. 
Marquise has just been on a tear. Five games in February, 23 and a half points. Here comes Marvin Prochet. 23 and a half points, six assists in those five games. And a player we seem to talk about a lot. If Marquise can make this free throw, he will tie for 13th place on the school's all-time scoring list. He could not, so Eric Banks still in 13th for the next few minutes at a minimum. Eric Banks, who at one point led this program in scoring when he graduated. 1,432 points right now at 1,431. Dukes, it's a fadeaway jumper is good. Nine points for Khalil Dukes. Khalil Dukes. Dukes definitely is not bashful. Has an answer for every Sienna bucket. Earth, quick fire three. Rebound volleyed up and controlled by Prochet. Looks like Nico could have dribbled drove, but instead stepped back for the higher degree of difficulty shot. Prochet attacks the rim. Hangs in the air. Bisping the rebound. Good position defense by Brett without fouling. Sixth board for Bisping. Clareth thought about another three. Instead, they'll work it around. Ogunyemi, great position and a foul on Rob. It'll be his third. Boy, that's a ticky-tack foul, and Rob really has got to be smarter with that type of play. Just over seven minutes to go in the first half here in Albany. Dominic robbed to the bench with three fouls. The biggest problem for Siena so far has been turnovers for Niagara. It's foul trouble. Yeah, Niagara, like you said, they're they're deep in the backcourt, not the front court. So Rob is the type of kid that they rely upon to eat up minutes where he rebounds well, he blocks shots, he's anchored to their defense. And when they want to extend themselves defensively, he's the guy that protects the paint. And now he's on the bench definitely for the rest of this half. Seven minutes is a long time. And if he picks up a quick one in the second half, boy, he's going to have limited action tonight. Ogunyemi makes two. His backup, Maurice Taylor, also has two fouls, as does their best player, Matt Scott. He's only played six minutes with two fouls as well. And he starts at a forward, you know, kind of small forward position for them also. Let's head over to Marissa. For Javion Ogunyemi to get more involved here now out of this timeout. That was obviously the clear message from Jimmy Patsos, especially with Dominic Rob out. They will look to go inside more to Javion. Robert? All right, thanks, Marissa. Javion rebounds the Prochet miss. Long, Helter Skelter to the rim. Follows it up and in. So strong. Great body control by Levon. Attacks the rim, knocks defenders out of the way, and is able to elevate and get his own miss and put in for an easy one. Levon, who started the game off for the Saints with a bucket, gives them another lead. Larkin. Too strong, rebounded by Long. Long dekes out a man in the open court, shivers to the rim, comes to right, who scores? Nice pass right there. Okay, maybe not, lost basketball, but the Saints right now have scored six straight points, and they're on a little bit of a 10 to two run to take this five point lead. Niagara timeout. Let's talk to Coach Patsos before the game. We asked him about the top three moments of the season so far. My first one's being on Time Warner Cable Sports. I mean that. It helps recruiting. It's great for the fan base. Every The players get excited when we're on here. Um, my other top moment was going to Iona and winning. And, you know, it's funny. The Glens Falls game, Bucknell, was a really big win for us, and they're a really good team. So that was one of those things. The season could have gone either way, and it really was a big win for us. I know there was a snowstorm, but it's been a great year, and it uh, has a lot to do with Time Warner Cable Sports. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Marissa. Marissa getting the shout-out like that. No surprise there. Over six minutes to go in the first half. Saints on a 10-2 run, as Tommy said, to take a 30-25 lead. Robert Lee, Tom Herder, Marissa Jackson, our entire crew with you from the state capital of Albany, New York. Saints trying to improve the 11-7 in conference play. 20 games in the max schedule, which will change next year. It'll go down to 18. Quick three. Not sure that's what they drew up out of the timeout. Gatling airballs it. And he will go out. Matt Scott will come in for Gatling. I'm not sure that's what the coaches wanted. 
Chris Casey did not appear to think that that was the play that was drawn up in the timeout. No, you're down five. The other team's got on a little bit of a roll, momentum with the home team. and These are 18 to 23-year-old kids. And you're chuck up a 27-foot <laughs> shot. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this being and a foul will be called on the loose ball rebound. Roche pushing Levon Long. Levon so active in this game tonight. He'll go to the line for one and one. And a loose ball push there on Proche, his first. You hate to see the whistle blown when there's a 50-50 play. That's a play where it should be survival of the fittest. And outside of a blatant two-handed push, you just let that stuff go. Benefit the Saints on this play, but you just hate to see it. And that's why Coach Casey didn't like it either. 12-2 run now for Siena. Our math is on point tonight, let me tell you. Saints man-to-man -man defense almost throughout against this tough Niagara team. Again, a team that can score the ball extremely well. Their issues have been defending the post, and now with the foul trouble that they have, maybe even tougher. Great defense by Long on Scott. Difficult shot. Great job by Long. Rebounded by Bisping. Right on the run. Wright will attack the rim and score. And Marquise Wright in transition. He is salivating. Just getting to the paint. Just using his athleticism to either go straight up or change his shot and make it. And that's... Second on Bisping. We had a great angle for that, and that's a reaction type of call. You see a guy go down, and the reaction is to blow the whistle, but in reality, the, content, the contact did not warrant the foul. Just five fouls against Siena, nine against Niagara. It's opened up a nine-point lead. Niagara won out of its last eight from the field. Biggest lead of the game for Siena. Out of bounds to Niagara. Marquise Wright has now passed Eric Banks for 13th on the all-time scoring list. Incidentally, Brett Bisping also moved up a spot earlier. He has now passed Ryan Rossiter for 11th. Dukes flips it in. It's 11 for Dukes. Touch, soft touch. He does, reminds me a lot of Sam Cassell. Just that he doesn't kill you with his, his, his athleticism, but he definitely has tremendous skill and just has the ability to put the ball in the basket. Ogunyemi backs down two. Rebound crochet. Niagara trying to battle back. Dukes yeah. leading the way with 11 points. There's a lot of bodies in the paint when Javion attempted that shot. That's not his strength going one on five. Ali two spiked away. Saved back in bounds right to Barton. Shot clock didn't reset. 13 to shoot. Barton attacks right. Scores. Tough Individual shot. effort. Tough shot right there by Barton. Strength right there to go off the wrong foot and hit the mid-range with hands close to the, sh to the ball. A lot of one-on-one -on -one play for Niagara. Pull back to within five. Wright leads the Saints tonight. Logan Yemi just pulling his way to the basket, and it was touched by a Niagara player when he was out of bounds. We head to a timeout. Saints leading Niagara by five. Saints lead Niagara 34 to 29. The rights to this broadcast have been granted by Siena College. Any rebroadcast or republication of this program without the written consent of Time Warner Cable and Siena College is strictly prohibited. This program is a production of Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Beautiful day in Albany. Temperatures in the lower 50s. Very unusual for this time of year. All over New York State. Midwest, too. Yeah. Warm temperatures. Love it. Love it. Spring, every day, one day closer to spring. Absolutely. You know what this type of weather reminds me of, though? March Madness. Mm. Turnover by Wright. Dukes trying to dribble through traffic, and Sienna will pull the pressure back now. Wide open three. Tried to follow. Instead, it comes away to Long. He feeds it ahead. Clara. Could be shot. It is. 
Nico with four. Great hustle by Levon Long to track down that long rebound. And Nico Clareth out in the open floor. He loves going off the right foot with the left-handed dunk. For a right-handed shooter, you don't see that very often. Very good at that. Long six points, five rebounds, two assists. Dukes. Shivers has played well. Good hustle to track down that long rebound. Right, was off early from three, has not been off going to the rim. Yeah, he's really, he's playing smart basketball, understanding his shot is not falling, so he's looking at every scene and taking advantage of it. Traveling is called against Niagara. Quietly, Sienna's got 38 points on the board, averaging 83 a game over the last six. This is an offense that's really humming right now. Well, they scored their most points last game against a Manhattan program that prides itself on being a great defensive team, and they have been. Manhattan is one of those teams that just always turns up the heat. They pressure you full court. They're stingy. They're undersized. Nothing comes easy as far as open shots, and the Saints really played well to score the 94 points. Nice speed and a good challenge at the rim by two. Will make Ogunyemi earn them at the line. Right drops the dime. That's a great play by two. You know, he had to come up to stop the dribble drive at the foul line. Then he recovered. Nice bounce pass. Marquise right to Javion Ogunyemi. Javion just not getting up for that dunk attempt. Two was above, but he also got a lot of arm. <laughs> Saves them at least one point. Saints in the middle of a four games in home games in five games stretch to end the season. Tom mentioned that earlier. This is the last of a three-game homestand. Ogunyemi with five. Biggest lead of the game for Siena. The last three of those home games for two at a scheduling against 10th place Manhattan, ninth place Niagara, and last place Maris next Sunday. So a chance for Siena to really build some momentum going into the MAC tournament. Well, they're building momentum in this game as they're on a 15-4 run to take a 10-point lead, their largest of the game. So the Saints are grabbing momentum. Let's see how they can do the last minute or two minutes of this half. Crochet block two flips it in. Good reaction right there by two. Matt Scott, Niagara's leading scorer, only has two points and is not in the game right now with two fouls. Rob, their top defensive player, has three fouls. He's only played seven minutes. Clara, the open three. Rebound volleyed around and down to Niagara. To the Niagara radio crew. Todd Callen, the voice of the Purple Eagles. Kadeem Smith and in for Asante Shivers. One of the nicer guys in the MAC. Been doing it a while, very yeah. nice fellow. Working solo tonight, so a little bit of game action there. He gets paid double for that. Mm. Dukes thought about the three. Dukes fouled. Ooh. And that's too bad because he was blocked by four players. And it's hard to get blocked by that many players, but he got fouled. Ogan Yemi picks up the foul. You mentioned Duke's shooting form. What if I told you that Khalil Dukes is third in the country at 93% from the line? Puts the ball in the basket. He has a, a very soft touch. His shot hits the rim on cue, Roberts. You have not lost that touch. My powers. Un uncanny. It's amazing. I mean, two would just be too much. Nope. Okay. 12 points for Dukes. He leads the Mac. Obviously in that category, third in the country, 93% coming in. Two misses or his teammate? <laughs> zone defense for the Purple Eagles, which, you know, I think the Saints are going to see a lot of zone defense as this season winds down. They just haven't proven to teams that they're capable of knocking down open shots. Good job there, getting it to Long in the middle of the zone. Well, you love getting it to the high post. Dukes, and, and the foul. Reach in foul, I believe, on Marquise Wright, which is a careless foul, because it's a reach in foul. Nope, they're gonna get Nico Claret. Smithen. Oh, Smith Smithen, okay. his first. Oh, he was the reach in, yeah. He was the help defender, sorry, but. Nice finish by Dukes. Yep. 14 points for Khalil Dukes. 
taking matters in his own hands. That's Trans the second time he has just gone to the basket with reckless abandon. Transfer from USC, timeout Siena. Use it or lose a variety. Coach Casey said Khalil Dukes played AAU basketball for a, a former player that Chris Casey coached at Central Connecticut. Uh, so one of Coach Casey's former players was Khalil Dukes' AAU coach. They kind of vetted him out, did their research on him, thought he'd be the right fit, and he certainly has been so far. Although a change in, as you said, cultures and certainly forecasts from USC to Niagara. No question. Well, first, it's a long ways from Connecticut, where Dukes is from, to Southern California. And coming back home, it would be a huge change in scenery going to... Let's Diamond head over Falls. to Marissa. Thanks, Robert. We've got some breaking news over here on the sidelines. We're not on tomorrow, but tomorrow is your birthday. So a very <laughs> happy birthday from all of us here at Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. 30 never looked yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that is a long ways in the rearview mirror, let me tell you, Marissa. I was talking about me. Yeah. I'll let you know what 40's like when you get there, Tommy. <laughs> 40 years old tomorrow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'll be with you. Final 14 seconds here. Not of my 30s, but of the first half. <laughs> Right leads the way with 13 points. Clareth, big three at the buzzer. He's been off in this first half. But the Saints go to the half with a six-point lead. Well, Siena did a good job starting off quickly. 7-0 run to start the game. Niagara took the lead, and Siena stole momentum back. Sienna 9-1 when leading at the half this year. Let's head over to Marissa. Thanks, guys. We're here with Sienna head coach Jimmy Patzos. Coach, before the game, you said to us, we have to score inside. You guys did a good job. Sienna men's basketball is presented by Trusco Bank, your hometown bank. And sponsored by Glens Falls Hospital, WB Mason, All-Star Wine and Spirits, and Ollie's Bargain Outlet. Siena has won three out of four coming into tonight's game. Niagara has lost two in a row and four of its last five. And after 20 minutes, it is Siena 41 and Niagara 35. Robert Lee, Tom Herter, Marissa Jacks, our entire crew with you. Final Time Warner Cable Sports Channel game of the season here from the Times Union Center. Saints in the gold jerseys, Niagara in the black. Dominic Robb starts the second half on the bench for Niagara with three fouls. Matt Scott is out there. Maurice Taylor in place of Robb. Easy pass inside, and it was tipped and stolen away. A quick turnover. Dukes had the hot hand in that first half. He leads all scores with 15 points. Matt Scott, Niagara's leading scorer at 18 a game, had only two points in the first half. He's got the ball here, number 13. Be interesting to see how Dukes and Wright go at each other, whether they're going to take some pride in their defense because both guys got lit up really in the first half. Dukes high arching three, halfway down, rebounded by Long. Nice bounce pass to Wright, Saints on the run. Wright stops on a dime, falls to the ground, turns it over, back to back turnovers to start the half. Barton gets a man in the air and is fouled. Levon Long. Got a lot of ball, but got some of the body to his second. That's a strong young man, LeVon Long. Just throwing another strong young man, Barton, to the ground. Nice pump fake right there by Barton. But the turnover at the offensive end for the Saints, back-to-back -back turnovers on their first two possessions, not a good start. That time, Marquise Wright slipping again. We've seen him do that so many times this year, especially at home, slipping on the floor, losing his footing. Barton to the line, 84%, missed the first. One, of, one for two in the first half as well. Did have six rebounds, Chris Barton. Sophomore from Pontiac, Michigan. Where Silverdome used to be. Actually, still is. Just not used. Yeah. Four points for Barton. I'm going to start a daycare, though. Long spins to the rim. Rebounded by Prochet. Saints unable to score so far in this half. 
Wide open, Scott, right corner three, it's good. There he goes, Matt Scott getting involved. That's what the Saints did not want. The lefty and hits the three to cut it to two. Empty three possessions to start the second half, two of them because of turnovers. 4-0 run to start the second half for the Purple Eagles. 12 to shoot. Bisping faces up. Takes offense. Gets it inside for Ogunyemi. Trying to muscle it up in traffic. Rebounded by Scott. Here come the Purple Eagles. Kiss the tire. Take the lead. Pull up jumper. Is good. Chris Barton with six. And quickly it's tied. 6-0 run to start the half. In two minutes. Pounded inside for Ogunyemi. Almost stolen away it is, another turnover. Telegraph that pass. Dukes pulls up for three. Rebound long. Now right in transition one-on-one. -on -one. Right couldn't finish. Bisping tips it in. Good hustle by Bisping. Marquise Wright is in a tough spot right now because he does not have good body language and his passes are just not good right now. Barton for Scott, another three. Nice kick out on the dribble drive. Barton double teamed. Niagara takes the lead. Matt Scott with eight points now. Quick start to the half by Scott and Niagara. Oganyemi rebounded by Taylor. Purple Eagles will push. Off of Scott's hands, and out of bounds, a turnover. Out of bounds. Right, very frustrated. I think he's going out of the game. Nico Clareth and Khalil Richard makes his first appearance. Richard, the freshman from Baltimore. Shivers out too. Marquise Wright with 13 points in the first half and just a, a real tough start to the second half for the senior. They quickly double Logan Yemi. Long right-handed layup. Love to see that. Don't that see it often. Utah. Absolutely. He didn't even look over at me. Not a frequent occurrence for Levon Long scoring with the right hand. Equally effective. 10 points. Scott. Fight for the board. Taylor saves it back into Long. Long in traffic. Long for Clareth. Left corner three. He's been off. Clareth 0 for 5 from three point range. Levon Long playing the point right now for the Saints. Richard has not played much recently. Richard gets a screen. Clareth about 30 feet away with four, another three. And out of bounds. 45-44, Saints with the lead, led by six of the half. It's been cut to one. Rally nuns here as it's been Niagara that has rallied from a six-point halftime deficit. Nine to four to start the second half to pull to within one. Saints led by as much as 10 late in that first half. That lead has been cut down to a point. Marquise Wright back in the game for Siena. Khalil Richard back out. Saints shooting 47%, Niagara up to 40%. And of note, Matt Scott has hit two three-pointers already here in the second half. The max third leading score. Niagara's got the ball with a chance to take the lead. Purple Eagles in it. 16-11 in the MAC. Coming off an 18-point blowout loss at Monmouth on Thursday. Saints 10-7 in the MAC. Tied their biggest margin of victory this year with a 23-point win against Manhattan Thursday. Is it a turnover? No, it was out of bounds off of Bisping. 23-point win over Manhattan Thursday, which 
followed a 102-82 loss against Monmouth on Monday here. Three home games in the span of a week, Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. Saints next game at Monmouth next Friday, six days off before that game. Niagara really having problems here, and a timeout. Well, it's a great trapping duo right there, Bisping and Long. Sends us to a quick commercial. Ni Niagara trails Siena by one. Saints lead Niagara by a point here early in the second half. We mentioned Siena at Monmouth, the first place team next Friday. Hey, Kelly O. Didn't Wally pit me on Thursday, but he was the number one play on SportsCenter. Which I've never been. Was he or the play? Well, he was in the background. Of the there you go. Okay. Saints at the first place team next Friday, Monmouth, and then home for the last place team next Sunday, Marist. With just two games left in the regular season, Niagara at home next weekend against St. Peter's and Fairfield, two of the top teams in the league. So we'll talk a little bit about the kind of the seeding implications, but right now there's five teams that have either six or seven losses. Iona and St. Peter's have six losses. Kanisha, Siena, and Fairfield have seven losses. One of those five teams is going to finish sixth and have to play four games in four days to win the championship. Scott Wildley to the rim, rebounded by Clareth. Good defense by Ogunyemi, contesting without foul. Almost another turnover. Long keeps control. Backdoor cut and a turnover. Sloppy pass right there by Levon. He's been good tonight. Scott Travel. Eighth turnover by the Purple Eagles. Saints have 12. An ugly back and forth sequence there over the last 30 seconds. Some pressure here from Niagara. Three quarter court press. It's the first time they've broken this out tonight, right? So long. Just look for Ogun Yemi. Couldn't finish at the rim. Got to make those. Rebounded by Prochet. Scott for three. And right the rebound. He throws it out of bounds. Wow. Saints are up one. Five turnovers already here in the second half. Trying to get Niagara back into this game. They are. Dukes well short. This is not going to Springfield this last minute or so. The tape of this. Oh, over and back. Wow. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it does. And the fans don't like it, but it's absolutely the right call. We're sitting in midcourt. We saw it. 14 turnovers for Siena now. Just comes in droves for them. And it's one thing if you disguise the 14 turnovers in about 40 minutes of action, but they seem to bunch them in, in small spurts. Taylor follows the Duke's miss. Six for Taylor. Double his season average. Seems he's got to just get some shots up here. Shooting 46%, very strong, but unable to even get shots away. They keep turning it over. Preferably shots you want. Long, wide open in the lane. He flips it in. Nice pass by Marquise Wright. Great position by Long. They went four out, one in. And I think the foul is going to be called on Wright. That will be his second. It is on Wright. Feet got tangled up. Marquise into 13th all-time in scoring. He's fourth in assists, and he's now... Nine assists behind Matt Brady for third place. He's also fifth in steals. Matt Brady, the current assistant coach at LaSalle, former head coach at Marist and James Madison. Barton, the smooth jumper, he's got eight points. Seesaw battle here. Clear up to the... Another nice feed. Marquise Wright finding a teammate for a high percentage shot. Saints take the lead back. Hey! 
Oops. Bisping, the loose ball. Kicked. That's called a drop kick, wrong sport. Out of bounds to Niagara. Another turnover for the Saints. Our UHY advisors assist in the game right to Clarence. Someone lost Nico in transition and he gets an easy one. UHY certified public accountants assist in the game. UHY the network for doing business. Dukes has been aggressive and scores. 17 for Dukes. Niagara takes the lead. A lot of lead changes in the second half. Saints led by six at halftime, led by as much as 10 in the first half. Niagara at one point had a five point lead. Dominic Robb finally gets up to check into the game here, eight minutes into the second half. Ogan Yemi. Right. This spin. Got away with a push. Mm. Fresh shot clock. Almost another turnover. Boy, that ball's been slippery in the hands of the oh Saints boy. in the second half. They just can't seem to make good passes or hold on to it. One of the alley oop for Ogan Yemi. It was snuffed out by Scott. Clareth. Rebound off the glass. Ogan Yemi had it stripped away. Scott the steal. Scott pushes ahead for Barton. He'll lay it in. Athletic play right there by Barton with a great outlet pass by Scott after the strip. That'll Good. send us to a timeout. And a foul on Scott. It'll be his third. Coach Patsos has seen his team fall behind by three. That's one of Siena's best rebounders of all time, Odie Anasicki, enjoying the game. He's back from his, or on a break, I'm not sure. He's playing in Italy right now, doing very well over there and taking in the game here tonight. Staten Island product. And I just saw his younger brother committed to Sacred Heart, EJ Anasicki. I did see that. Wonder if he was uh, someone that was looked at by the Saints, carry on the family tradition. OD having a good pro career. Happy last day. OD will be going back to play tomorrow, so nice to see him come back to uh, catch a Siena game. Jeez, Robert, you're getting all the luck. I know. Scott just said it's my last day of the 30s. <laughs> People clapped. I felt good. Bisping, left corner three. It's good. Gives him double figures for the game. Much needed boost for the Saints. Ten for Bisping. The game is tied at 52. 11, 10 to go here. Saints need a win to try to stay in that top five mix. Tied with Canisius for fourth place. Scott, the smooth jumper. Nice little step back right on the freshman. The 10 for Scott. Scott, he's tough. Whenever he's going to his right, that's where you're susceptible to the step back because it's he doesn't have to square his body up. Just like right-handers, they like to go hard to their left and step back because they don't have to square up on that either. Turnover. A little bit too close proximity for that pass from Long to Bisping. 17th turnover for the Saints. Ninth this half. About one a minute this half. It's a lot of empty possessions. Mm. Kind of puts a damper on a good shooting there. Sienna just five out of 14 from the field this half. Rob is back in the game. This being good job getting the ball to himself. Right, has then to shoot it after that awkward start and shivers traveled. 10 turnovers this half in nine minutes and 41 seconds. I've never seen a team play so tentative. It's like the players on the court know they're turning the ball over all the time and everyone's afraid to make a play. Even before that turnover by Shivers, the pass from Bisping to Marquise Wright, it's like they were second guessing even making the pass. Nothing coming with just pure confidence right now. Wow. Grab it, grab it. Rebound, bounces to Bisping. 
Scored and a foul. And that's Marquise Wright at his best. Little handshake dribble at the three-point line. Got Barton leaning, able to go to his right, split defenders, get raked across the wrist, and still finish. Just so athletic, as we'll see right here. Boom, little handshake dribble. You love the hard step to his left. Marquise, Saints need him. He 15 points for right. He didn't look right to start the second half. He's now one out of four from the free throw line. The foul was on Barton. Crochet had it knocked away. Levon Long, always around the basketball. Out of bounds. It's the second time that's happened to Larkin. He's well, out of bounds when he caught the ball. Yeah, well, that time he actually was out of bounds and came back in. It was the first to touch it, so you can't do it. The other time he did step out, but that's just a mistake. Right. Feed for Ogunyemi. Rejected at the rim, but foul. Taylor, his third. Nice pass by Marquise Wright. Niagara extended themselves a little bit, and the Saints were able to pass out of the trap early, and that led to numbers. Four on three advantage for the Saints, and Marquise Wright finds Javion Ogunyemi, who's been very quiet in this game. Just six points. One of, I believe, seven from the field. Not one of the stronger games, and they go to him a lot. He's really been Siena's most consistent scorer this year. He leads the team in double-figure games. Well, like I mentioned, this team goes inside to Javion a lot. It's not like they're running plays to get Marquise Wright shots or Brett Bisping shots. They run plays to get Javion Ogunyemi the ball inside. When he's not going, this team can play ugly. And luckily, the Saints have not played great, and they're up by one. If they get it going for the last nine minutes of this game, then they can pull out the victory. But something tells me that that young man is going to have something to say about it. That's a smooth jump shot by Khalil Dukes. Game high 19 for Dukes. Clareth, the wide open three. It's good. Nico Clareth. One out of eight from three point range now, but a much needed shot in the arm there. Another assist by Marquise Wright. Nico was wide open because of the respect Niagara has to give Marquise Wright with his dribble penetration. Nico's man got off of him and he was wide open with the nice pass. Taylor rejected by Ogunyemi. Wide open Dukes. He'll attack the rim. Hate that shot. Taylor lays it in. Hate that shot by Dukes, but it fell into the hands of Taylor. Saints were active defensively on that possession. They had guys flying to the basketball. Eight points, five rebounds for Taylor off the bench. We're singing his praise early, and he has proven you right. Rob has not been a factor tonight. Taylor has filled in ably. Right, crazy shot. Ogunyemi, the rebound, knocked away. And it's going to be a turnover against Siena. No, a timeout. Timeout called by Siena will send us to a timeout. Four on the shot clock. Saints will have the ball when we return. So I got sync, checking out the kiss cam. Part of a crowd of 6,850 here tonight. He looks like he's enjoying it. Big crowd, almost a little bit over 6,800 here on a Saturday night. Second to last home game of the season. Then the MAC tournament will be held here in a couple of weeks. This game hanging in the balance with under eight minutes to go. Four on the shot clock. This being off the inbound strings the three. Big shot. Brett with his second three-point field goal of the second half. Gives the Saints the lead again. It's a big shot. So few seconds on the shot clock, and you're able to hit a three. That's such a dagger. 13 for Bisping, Ogunyemi. That's the ball out of bounds with 12 to shoot. Javion's had some active hands. Big block earlier right there, getting a deflection. Brett, fifth all-time at CNN rebounding, and he's moved into 11th on the school's all-time scoring list. He needs another 26 points to reach 10th. Rob Poole, 1,493 points. So 
Brett continues in his current production. He should finish in 10th all time. Air ball. Rebounded as always by the offense, as Tom says. Taylor going to work on the glass. He will go to the line. The only senior on the roster, Maurice Taylor, will shoot two. Great activity right there by Taylor. Gets the inside position. Was that Levon Long with the foul? Levon's third. Taylor, 53% free throw shooter. His first attempt of the game, Matt Scott in, Kevin Larkin out. The three fouls on Long. He's the first player for Siena with three fouls. Scott, Taylor, and Rob all with three fouls for Niagara. Taylor way off on those free throws. Saints just figured out who they're going to foul late if they're down. Zone defense for the Purple Eagles. They're going to try to get the ball to the high post to Levon Long. Clareth, fade away three. Rebounded by Taylor. Tough shot by the sophomore. Three on one break. Scott for three. Air ball might have been partially blocked. Rebounded by Clareth. Oh, turnover. Tough pass to catch for Bisping. Not a bad look, but I don't think Brett could actually see the ball where it started. Dukes fouled. 19 turnovers now for Siena. Foul on Ogunyemi, his second. And that'll put Dukes at the line for two. JV on swung and missed. Khalil Dukes a 93% free throw shooter. Has 20 points now for the ninth time this season. Dominic Robb in for Marvin Prochet. So a bigger lineup here for Niagara with both Robb and Taylor, their primary two inside players, both in there at the same time. Reacting to the bigger lineup that Cena plays with pretty much throughout. 21 this, for Dukes. This being an Ogunyemi manning the four and five positions for the Saints. Sienna's gone with the four seniors and then either Clareth or Shivers in the second half. Very minimal substituting. Right with a long three. It's good. Keese with 18 and a huge shot. And a timeout, Sienna. Now, I have that as Sienna's last timeout. On the scoreboard, they have Sienna has one left. So I think it is Siena has one timeout left. Lots of time left to, in this game. Big shot by Marquise Wright. The third three-point field goal of the second half for the Saints after making just two in the first half. Marquise was 0 for 2 in the first half, and that's a big one right there. More college basketball action tomorrow from Poughkeepsie. Canisius at Marist right here on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Don't sleep on the Griffs. 10 and 7 in the MAC. Not an overwhelming record. Here's what I'm going to tell you about Canisius. Lost to Monmouth twice. Yes. Lost by four points and six points. Split with Iona. Beat them most recently. Beat St. Peter's on the road already. Play St. Peter's at home next weekend. Swept Siena. Those are the to other top four teams in the league besides Canisius. So they played well against the better teams in the league. Then again, they got swept by Niagara. Preseason pick ninth. New coach, Reggie Witherspoon, who used to be the coach at the University of Buffalo. is a really nice job. He is definitely one that you would consider for coach of the year. And a veteran team. Start two seniors and two fourth-year juniors. So a lot of experience on that team for Canisius. Currently tied for fourth with Siena, but Canisius with the season sweep has the tiebreaker. Barton, well off. This being the loose ball. Saints up by four, trying to forge ahead here and win their fourth out of the last five. State's offense stagnant here with 12 on the shot clock. Yet to get it within really 20 feet of the basket here with six. It's going to be an eco-clear with contested three. And 
it's rebounded and a foul. On long, it'll be his fourth. Only the fifth against Siena, so will not lead to free throws, but four fouls on LeVon Long. Going for the loose ball there. Shivers in for Long. No, in for Clareth. No, in for Long. Clareth thought he was coming out. It's Long going to the bench. Long with 12.7 rebounds, four assists. Niagara has cooled off since a hot start to the second half. Barton hounded by Clareth. Foul. Unnecessary foul there, his first. But that will be the sixth against Siena. Niagara, a very good free throw shooting team, will shoot free throws starting with the next foul. Crunch time for the Saints. This last five minutes, as you have mentioned, this is such an important game for Siena. If they want to finish in the top five, this is a game they have to have. Scott banks it in. Goes to his right hand. Good dribble drive. Javion did a good job of not fouling. But at what point does someone step up and maybe take a charge on that type of play? Scott gets the tough runner. He has 12 after having only two at halftime. Saints have struggled to generate good looks here in the last couple of minutes. Shivers fouled with four on the shot clock. Just the fourth team foul for the Purple Eagles. It's going on Barton. It's his second. That's a huge break for Siena because it resets the shot clock when they really didn't have anything going there. Nope, that was going to be a Niagara basketball if that block is not called. Crochet in for Taylor. Taylor checks out with eight points and eight rebounds. Clareth off the inbounds. Rebounded by Scott. He pushes ahead for Barton. Slices to the rim, and he'll go to the line. 4-2. Bisping his third. Scott's done a nice job pushing it out in transition, as has Niagara as a whole. Yeah, taking advantage right there. I was watching the replay. That's just not a smart foul. Brett's got to just go up straight, make the smaller player, make a shot over a bigger player. Barton, two out of four from the line. Comes up short on the first. Niagara now six out of 12 from the free throw line. Came in as the second best team in the league from the stripe. Missed two. Huge misses by Barton. Very big misses. Taylor missed two just a few minutes ago. So Niagara, two for six on their last six foul shots. Long sets a check into the game. Zone defense for the Saints. Where do you go? Right, the long three. It's good. Marquise Wright bangs it home. 21 points. Back-to-back -back threes for Marquise Wright for the Saints. He big, has just been on a tear. Big shots by the senior. Five-point lead, a huge shot there for Wright. What a boost, those three-point shots. Ten on the shot clock here. It's Crochet turns and fires. Rob tried to follow it in. Instead, it's Bisping the rebound. Oh, he's about six inches from the rim and shot an air ball on a put -knock. And demand for the Purple Eagles switching it up. This is where the Saints would like to go into this guy right here. He's had a tough game. Shivers a big three. It's good. Saints have now opened up an eight-point lead. Timeout Niagara. Shivers with eight. And back-to-back -back threes have given Siena some breathing room. With just over three minutes left to go here in Albany. Siena, a team that struggled from beyond the arc all season, has really caught fire here late. Yeah, they've hit some big threes in the second half. Mark 
Marquise, that's his first of two. We saw Nico. And then the last one on the kick out, Ogunyemi with the assist to Shivers. We've talked about it. You know, Siena's a team, uh, 338th out of 347 yep. Division I in teams. In number of threes. In number of threes. And it's a weapon that this team has not been able to take advantage of. It's not their strength. But boy, it's such an important part of successful teams. And quite frankly, they wouldn't have this eight point lead if it weren't for multiple three point field goals in the second half. Scott kicks it out for Prochet, who's been off tonight. Scott, free throw line jumper. Got the roll. Soft touch by Scott. Almost a steal by Marquise Wright. Saints need to answer two and a half minutes. This is where you execute. This is where your offense has to step up. It's not always about one-on-one -on -one plays. It's about what are you trying to run, and the Saints turn the ball over on a simple post-entry pass. 20th turnover of the game. Yvonne Long, instead of catching that with two hands, he tries to catch it with one. There's a, a teachable moment for everyone watching, especially if you're young and still playing. If you're old like me, you just remember what your coaches used to yell at us. Catch the ball with two hands. Clareth in for Long. Turnover on Scott. Good defense by Bisping. Long back in. And Clareth out. Two possession two game right now with two minutes to go. Niagara going to play this straight up, man to man. The Saints will try to work the clock. Keep in mind, Niagara only has 14 fouls, so if they do choose to start fouling, they're going to have to give away a couple of fouls before they force the Saints to the line. Ten to shoot. Wright has been hot. This being attacks the rim and got the roll. Soft touch again. Nice two-man play right there. You put two seniors in the position to win the game for you. He scored for Siena, ran about 25 seconds off the clock and scored. Niagara will use its final timeout. You have to think Niagara, score or not, Siena gets the ball back. You have to start fouling. And there we see the two-man action. So this is where there's a lot of games. The Saints would love to go inside to Javion Ogunyemi, but Javion's been struggling making field goals, not being able to finish through contact. Bisping with kind of a quiet double-double. Got a lot of rebounds early for the big three in the second half, but another double-double for the fifth-year senior. Minute 39 left to go here. Saints lead 72-64. Three games left in the regular season. Two after tonight. Monmouth has clinched the regular season title already. 15 and two. Iona and St. Peter's tied for second at 11 and six. Canisius and Siena tied for fourth at 10 and seven. Fairfield, nine and seven. Those six teams playing for the five first round buys. Monmouth has one of them. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Probably the only team, of course, they're in sixth place, Fairfield. It's tough. And it's we've said it, this game is so big for the Saints. They lose and go to 10 and 8. Fairfield nipping at their heels. Luckily, the Saints swept Fairfield. So yep. it'd be hard for the Stags to overtake the Saints. They have to really hope to overtake Canisius. And looking at the remaining schedules, it would look like if things play out as you would expect, Fairfield would be the odd team out there at St. Peter's. They host Monmouth at Canisius at Niagara. Very difficult closing stretch for Fairfield. They need to make up some ground on Canisius and Siena. Tough to sweep Buffalo. And they play the top team in the league in there as well. Then again, so does Siena and Monmouth for that, or and Iona for that matter. Barton. This being another rebound is 17th. Good defense without fouling. Barton making one of those moves where the intent is to draw a foul more than make a basket. Saints did a great job of not fouling and then coming up with a tough traffic rebound was this game. Niagara has to foul here. Have to foul here. Now you don't want to with 10 on the shot clock, but they've let 20 seconds come off the clock. They finally foul right with 10 to shoot. Well, again, you just had a timeout. 
What did you talk about in the timeout? You just with them and and they only have five fouls now, so they've got to do it again. They have to do it again and then do it again after that. <laughs> poor, you know, poor time management there. If you know you have two fouls to give to get to the bonus, you go for the steal, and if you don't get it, you just foul right away. They've got to do it right again here. They have to foul them again. They do. Barton with four fouls now. Now Sienna will inbound again with 57 seconds left. I would throw the ball to whoever Barton is guarding. What? I don't see too many Niagara guys stepping up and saying, hey, I'll foul someone. <laughs> this thing is a very good free throw shooter. Actually, I'm not going to call him very good. I'm going to call him good. 74%. Crochet will go to the line. Crochet out of Long Island Lutheran. Not his first time playing on this court. I know he's a sophomore, so he played last year at Niagara, but playing in the Federation Tournament in Albany. One and one for Bisping, the senior. Sixteen for Brett. Second in the league in rebounding. Going to help that cause tonight with 17 boards. Career high is 18, which believe it or not, he's done five times. 17 and 17 for Bisping. And the Saints... Could be on their way here with a 10-point lead. Largest lead of the game tied. And Long comes away with a rebound, and that should be Niagara's last gasp. Long is pretty much mugged in the open court. By Barton. He fouls out, sacrificing himself for the team. 43 seconds left. The Siena should win here and improve to 11 and 7 in the MAC with a 10 point lead and 43 seconds left going to the free throw line. With the win, if they are to win, they would move into fourth place by themselves now at 11 and 7. And if Iona or St. Peter's were to lose, the problem for Siena is right now they lose the tiebreaker with all of the other teams that they're up near the top with. Well, you and I, I think we talked about it off the air, but the one key for the Saints is Friday night's game. Yep. If you can knock off Monmouth, then you start to win some tiebreakers. Iona closes with three home games as Long pretty much salts this one away with 14. Ryder in Manhattan, two, let's be honest, likely wins for Iona, and then home against Monmouth to close the season. St. Peter's hosts Fairfield, and then they're also in Buffalo next weekend at Niagara and Canisius. Dukes is fat. So the, the good part about the way the schedule works out is all the top teams are playing each other next week and next weekend. And, which is what you want. You want those big matchups late in the season where everyone's trying to jockey for position. So, you know, and the league is, every league is just tough. It's tough mm. to win on the road. Familiarity and, you know, common type of players, it's tough. A lot of times it comes down to that one or two made shots. Let me ask you this. This is our last game of the season. Last time we'll be together, but Monmouth clearly the heavy, heavy favorite in my opinion going in. They're on 15 and 2. They've won 13 in a row. They're, Justin Robinson's just absolutely on fire right now. What teams do you see as possible? You know, anyone, anything can happen. What teams do you see as challengers to beating Monmouth? And specifically, what would Siena have to do to beat Monmouth? Well, St. Peter's is the type of team I could see beating Monmouth in a in a tournament type of situation just because of how they defend and they have some athletic players that can actually put the ball in the basket. Uh, you know, that used to be what Manhattan would do. They play defense against you and they have one or two guys that are just, if they get hot at the right time, can carry a team. So I would say St. Peter's might be, it's hard to call them a dark horse with where they're sitting in the conference right now. Um, I don't have as much confidence in Iona as I may have had in the past. I just think they've got some injuries. They don't quite have the horses that they've had in the past. And then, you know, Canisius. Uh, tough to say. Tough to say. If they're hot, you know, they're yeah. such a three-point reliant team. Yeah. They don't have much inside. Exactly. And, and Monmouth is such a well-balanced team. So it's going to be Monmouth's tournament to lose. Let's just say that. But Siena is definitely a team that... 
their best, you put their best five on the floor, I think they can play with any team in this league. And you put Siena's best five on the floor, you might say that they have, they they may win three of the matchups. Mm. So, and the one one of the matchups you'd lose, you know, Siena doesn't have a slouch in that position either with Marquise Wright going head to head against Justin Robinson. So, it's um. But this team has been a little bit of an, an enigma this year. So who shows up and how hard do they play? They certainly didn't play well enough against Monmouth at home defensively to play championship basketball. This thing's got it. That was a nice crossing pass right there by LeVon Long, by the way. 76-70 the final. Saints make plays down the stretch to beat Niagara. Siena improves to 14-15, 11-7 in the MAC. Niagara. 